Hey coin collectors, it's DC on the Big D, and this is a 1971 quarter from the United States of America. It says Liberty at the top here. As you can see, 1971 at the bottom. George Washington facing to the left, and in God we trust right here in front of him. And if we magnify that out, we see that the ponytail come down the back. Really, really good definition here in the eyes. This is something you don't see very well in a worn quarter. And in here through the nose and the lips, very good definition. Way down underneath, we see that there's a J and an F. And that's for John Flanagan, the engraver of this coin. These first came out in 1932 on the 200th anniversary of George Washington's birthday. And so this was the 40th year that they made this particular coin. This is a clad coin. And by clad, what, that, what they mean is that there's a copper nickel cladding over the outside, both sides, front and back, and then inside there's 100% copper. And you can see that's that brown in the center. That's that bright copper. Sometimes you can tell how good a coin is just by tipping it up on its edge and looking at how shiny that edge is. In this case, that kind of work. In this case, that works. If we flip it over onto the back, we see that there's an eagle on the back holding some arrows. Down below the eagle is an olive wreath, two sprigs of olives tied together here. And they come down to the very bottom and touch the quarter dollar. And when I say touch, this one actually does touch just barely over here on the A. And one of the things you do when you look at these is to see where it touches. In some cases, that will determine whether it's a special coin or not. In this case, nothing special, but it still looks pretty good. United States of America at the top, E Pluribus Unum here. We see an eagle here, and we're not going to see much definition in the eagle's face. The coins from 1971 have a bad reputation. The grading service PCGS has an article where they're labeled as badly scuffed, they have poor luster, and they're weak strikes. This one isn't too scuffed, but it does have poor luster, not very shiny. It's a very weak strike. If we look at the legs on Eagle, you can see no feathers at all, hardly any feathers in the chest. And this chest area is full of feathers in a good strike. The area between the legs here is full of feathers, and then down the legs it has feathers. And in the center of this arrow, there will be this top arrow, there'll be a line going through, and there's kind of a line there, but that line's only because you can't see the line from the top arrow at all. It's so blurry. In 1971 at Philadelphia, they made 109 million of these, and it's so hard to get a good one. The highest grade they've ever found is a mint state 67 out of 70. They found eight of those, and those are worth $4,000. So the fact that they didn't do that great a job on them does seem to help out in the value if you can get up to the upper end. So always look for the 1971s because there could be a really valuable coin out there. This is the 1971 Denver Mint coin. And at the Denver Mint, they made 259 million. They found two so far at a Mint State 68. Mint State 68, the highest grade ever for what they call a business strike or general circulation coin. The Denver Mint, those two Mint State 68s, they're worth 5,500 each. And then finally, they made it at the San Francisco Mint. And this one doesn't seem like it's a special coin at all. But that's partly because the wrapper kind of became one with this coin. But also you see there's a blemish on there, which we, we don't usually see from San Francisco coins because if it's a San Francisco coin from 1971, it's a proof coin. And you can see the S there. You can also see this huge blemish on Washington's neck. And that's something that you almost never see from the San Francisco Mint. They made 3.2 million of them. They've never found a proof 70 at the San Francisco Mint at PCGS or at NGC. The best they've ever found has been a proof 69 deep cameo and this is none of those it's not a deep cameo it's not a proof 69 if you did get this in a proof 69 deep cameo two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars so really really high value coins if you can get them in a great grade but there just aren't many high graded coins from san francisco there are some specialty or some error coins coin world talks about how they found a copper nickel blank with no cladding on it at all at the denver mint so the denver mint has a few errors that we know of. This is the Denver Mint here with the D. And at the Denver Mint, a 1971 nickel struck on a dime blank. They found a quarter without any cladding. They found two of those. They found a nickel struck on a dime blank. And they found a 1971 quarter struck on
on a silver half stalk is what they call it and actually cut down so look for the some of the denver mint ones if you're looking for some of the arrow coins and the way that you can tell them even if you're not sure if it's just a dirty coin or arrow coin is to weigh them these coins weigh over five grams and if you get one of the copper nickel ones without the cladding it weighs 4.81 grams or they found another one that weighs 4.77 grams. So look for them out there. They've never found any really spectacular ones. If you've got a mint set or a proof set, look for those because they just have not been able to find any highly gradable ones to date. They never found a proof 70 San Francisco mint. They've never found a mint state 68 Philadelphia mint, and they've never found a mint state 68 plus Denver mint. They're just none better out there. So look for them. Have a great day. This is DC Sam. Please subscribe to the Big D Coin channel. Leave any comments you have in the comments section.